Got a little flake right on that piece of rock here. You can probably see it. Hey YouTube, this is Matt, the prospecting geologist. I'm here with you starting the Glacial Gold Prospecting Series um, that I've been wanting to do. Uh, with this one, we're going to start, being the first one of it, we're going to start with uh, generally going over the streams that run east to west and then there's the small, more so tributary streams to larger valleys that are running north-south. And the thought process behind this is, is that as the glaciers advanced from the north to the south, they would carve out the north-south running valleys and dig them deeper and deeper. And generally they would skip over and dump material into the east-west valleys. So on this map right here, and I'm just using this map as an example, it doesn't cover the area where I've been doing videos or anything. But you see these red, reddish colored areas. Those are the larger creek valleys running north-south. And that red denotes alluvium of over 100 feet to bedrock. Uh, and then the orange is... Uh, 50 to 100 feet and the yellow is 25 to 50 feet. So these north-south running streams and rivers here have been dug very deep by the glaciers and you are probably not going to find bedrock on those courses where the streams are running over that. But if you look at these uh, east-west running tributaries, well I guess here they are there's going to be a thin skin of alluvium in them, but they're mapped as being more or less probably running on bedrock, or bedrock will be shallow, probably five foot or less. And with the glaciers skipping over them and dumping material as they eroded back out, the material that was in there had some gold in it, and as it eroded back out of the first interglacial period, it would have cut that back out and concentrate that material into the bottom and we have the second glacial period come through um, dump more material in there and then when they receded for the last time those stream valleys would have cut themselves back out and reconcentrated all that material again so you have two eras of concentrated material potentially in the east to west running valleys uh, whereas these north south runs would have been dug deeper and deeper and then potentially only have one era of gold bearing gravel in them because any of the previous ones would have been scoured out by the last glacial advance. Um, so with the videos coming up we're in the east east west running little tributaries and everything and we think those are going to generally one have shallower bedrock and two better gold because it's concentrated at least two glacial advances worth of material that could have come from different areas. Um, that's the thoughts behind it and the premise, but we're going to get to the videos here and uh, take a look at what we found so far. We'll have to keep kind of re-updating this and everything as, as I get out there and prospect more of these streams and run more equipment and stuff in eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Uh, this will be the start of this series. What's up YouTube? On another little uh, prospecting trip here in western Pennsylvania right now. Um, checking out another creek. And some background on this one is it is a small creek runs kind of north northeast southwest um and it's in the glacial area draining into a river not too far down that way um and you can see the nice there's a lot of big rounded cobble in here 
and it's exotic. There's a lot of it too that's not from here. Uh, granites and quartz and everything. I saw a quartz cobble somewhere. I can't see it right now. But uh, those are all positive signs and we already took one little pan. And there are two colors in one pan from like right here. Let's see if you can see these. Yeah, one little flake right there and one there. And that was the first pan, so that's the most success we've had. Um, I have to look at the geologic maps to see if this is draining. I think this is cutting through uh, terminal moraine material that is then concentrated since the glaciers. Okay, so we're out here on the little known public place in PA called S Bend. You can see, you can see these guys have been ripping and tearing at it for a while with only hands and pans and sluices. Um, but for Western PA, I just pulled a pan out of, I've been crevicing right here. This bedrock crack and I pulled out, I'd call it a Pennsylvania picker. Cause you can actually probably see it in the GoPro camera too. Yep. So that was a single, like two handfuls of material from that crevice and got a nice, nice flake, special flake, little baby Pennsylvania picker. Um, so it's definitely here in Pennsylvania. The thing that hampers us is without a permit, we're not allowed to use any motorized equipment. So that kind of kills using any little suction dredge and kills the discovery of new stuff because it's much harder to find new stuff when you got to move three foot overburden to get to bedrock. Um, but it's here. Uh, I mean, you saw the other streams I was prospecting today and they were not, they didn't find anything, but you can see also the rounded gravel. There's a lot more of it here, which was definitely glacially influenced and there's granite cobble and other stuff. So it indicates it's a fairly, it was a glaciated stream. And we're on this slab bedrock section here, which is then concentrated and it's all down in the cracks. Um, but we got a lot more exploring and other theories to test out and stuff. This is the known about spot where everybody comes and we'll be looking for more areas too. But yeah, that's a Pennsylvania picker. Nice little one right there. So we'll be back. Got a little flake right on that piece of rock here. You can probably see it a little bit. We got to pan this out here. It's all from this now larger crack that we've been working as we've expanded it and made it bigger here we'll throw that in there and pan that out There's a couple nice flakes and a bunch of fines from a little tiny pan. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there was barely any material in there. But so this chunk of bedrock right here's got to move eventually, and there's cracks running through all these here. So eventually, we'll chunk all those up. There seems to be some decent flakes and little pickers coming from it. So look at this little beautiful place here on this creek. Nice little waterfall. And beautiful bedrock everywhere. I pan a couple spots, but I haven't found anything yet. But a lot of it just seems to be kind of loose, exposed, blowout material. Um, this creek does cut through a lot of glacial material, as well as, like I said, canes and eskers. So I think the likelihood is here. We just got to find a good spot. That's going to be the issue with the big rounded boulders over there. Beautiful, beautiful bedrock. And a natural slip and slide, probably. <laughs> nice little area, though. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, just trying to look for cracked bedrock that I can break into that might have held on to something. 
That's been the issue so far, is everything's been kind of just loose material. No clay or hard pack. It's not kind of looking at the bedrock here. Okay, well cleaned out another crack in this bedrock. I mean, you see this big expanse of beautiful bedrock here. Little ripple pool. There's a nice deep, deep crack right here I cleaned out. Um, I still got to get it all the way down. Look at all the lead just from that one crack. Shit ton of lead. Take that. Put it there. I'll grab it later. But I need to get this pan down just a little further. I didn't see any gold. I mean, I'm just frustrated right now, too. This, To me, this creek, based off of all the glacial stuff going on around here, should have some gold in it. But I'm not seeing anything obvious. Let's see. I ain't seeing crap. There's a good little hole there, too. Frustrating. Frustrating. Got nice little quartz pebbles. And really nice rounded quartz one right here. I guess not from here. A bunch of this stuff isn't, but I'm not seeing gold in it. Sucks. I'm gonna try and clean out this next, I think. So yeah, with those three streams that we looked at in this video here, two of them produced gold. One produced really nice gold and has been, um, and has a lot of exposed bedrock. The other one that produced gold, I think it's sea exposed bedrock, but I only had a very limited area that I could look at. I'm hoping to gain permission for more of that creek to take a better look. Um, and then the other one, the big one with a lot of exposed bedrock, uh, I need to go back there and search more. I just feel like the area I was in was a lot of blowout and loose material, and I need to just go walk up and down that creek more and uh, find some better catch zones and everything, because there's a, it, it has a lot of good indicators with all the bedrock that there is, the fact that it cuts through moraine deposits, a bunch of glacial till, as well as some eskers and canes. Um, and it's a fairly large east to west running creek. Um, it needs, it warrants more exploration on that creek, and we will get to that here at some point. And it is generally, I think, considered a public creek in this area where you can walk up and down it without issue. Um, so we'll be doing that. But yeah, of, of our theories so far, the east to west, east to west smaller streams seem to generally have much more bedrock. And uh, so far, I've produced some decent gold for Western Pennsylvania. We'll see how they stack up compare with uh, all of our other hypotheses that we're going to be coming out with, with uh, videos attached and everything. So, 
Uh, that's going to wrap up this first part of our glacial gold prospecting series. And uh, please like and subscribe and share. And uh, there will be more coming along. See ya.